You know, <clears throat> all of us, we were born into the world. Every man on earth, we were born into the world. And being born into the world means that as soon as somebody was given birth to, Satan had dominion over you. Because he is the God of this world. Are you hearing me? And so every man that was born into the world was born into sin and into the dominion of the devil. There is no question about it. The powers and the forces of darkness will hold you ransom. They will make you do what you don't want to do. They will persuade you. They will oppress you. Sometimes they will mess up your destiny. Any man, any woman, born on earth, natural childbirth, natural birth, you are born into the kingdom of darkness. Every man was born into the dominion of the... Ah, you need to get this right. Because when we talk about salvation and being born again, people don't understand it. If you don't understand your first birth, you will not understand the need for second birth. Are you hearing me? If you don't understand the problem with the first covenant, you will not understand the place of the new covenant. So it is important for you to know that you were born in sin, born in the dominion of darkness, born under the influence of the devil. You need to get this right. No matter your family, no matter the name, it doesn't matter. Even if you were born in the richest family, you were born, born in darkness, born under the power of darkness. I cannot stress this enough. Any man born on planet Earth is born under the power and the influence of forces of darkness. Shout hallelujah. And that is why we dedicate our children as quickly as possible. The dedication of the children is a separation, is, is, is a break off from the dominion of darkness. And so when we, when we bring our children for dedication, this is what we are doing. We are saying, Lord, born in darkness, but I'm presenting my child to the light. Born under the dominion of the devil, but Lord, I'm handing over my child to Jesus. People don't get it. If you don't dedicate your child to God, to Jesus, even though you are born again, that child is under the dominion of the forces of darkness. People ask, when should I dedicate my child? Is it after one month? Is it after two months? After? In the moment you give birth, dedicate the child. Did you hear what I just said? The moment you give birth, do what? What does it take to dedicate the child? Lay hand on the child. Call upon the name of the Lord over that child. Before the devil will have an opportunity to touch the child, let the hand of uh, righteousness be upon that child. Make a pronouncement. I said, you are born of God. I impart the spirit of God upon you. And so the question, when do you do it? As quickly as possible. Are you hearing me? Because the moment you establish that covenant over that child, it is registered in heaven. That child is registered in heaven. Heaven becomes a custodian of that child. Forget the celebration. You can do that later on. Are you hearing me? You can do that maybe one month, two months, as you wish. You can do it. But what is important is that as soon as you give birth to a child, knowing that the devil runs affairs in this world, you need to separate your child from the forces of darkness. Look at Colossians chapter 1 for you to appreciate what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. The word of the word 
It's a different life. It's a different life. Amen? Amen. The reason why the Bible says that he has rescued us, that Jesus has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. If we were not in the dark, then this would not be true. If we were not under the dominion of the kingdom of darkness, then this scripture would be a lie. But the Bible says, the Bible says in verse 13, praise the Lord, for he has rescued us from what? The dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Rescued us. As long as you are not born again, you are not rescued. As long as you are not born again, devil have dominion over you. Devil can influence you. As long as you are not born again, you cannot make your will and live with it on earth because the devil is there to make sure you do evil. The job of the devil is to make you do evil. Praise the Lord. And so when you come to church and you are not born again, you will still live in the dominion of darkness. You will talk like those in darkness. You will behave like those in darkness. Even though you come to church. Even though you come to church. Coming to church does not get you born again. No. You have to make a decision to give your life to Jesus. And that is what makes a difference. You say, Lord, I am tired of being under the dominion of darkness. I have tried all I know. I cannot save myself. I cannot deliver myself. Lord, rescue me from the dominion of darkness. This is the way it begins. This is what the new life begins. It's not just that you come to church every day. I ask somebody here, they're among the workers. I ask the person, are you born again? He said, yes. And I asked him, what does it mean to be born again? He said, when you stop lying. I said, what? He said, when you stop lying. And you know, people think like that. They think that being born again is about being a good person. You don't lie. You, you don't cheat. You don't commit adultery. You don't commit fornication. You don't steal. You don't do that. You don't do that. That good works will never get you saved. Are you hearing me? Being a good person will never make you a Christian. The only way to be a Christian is only one way. You must accept Christ. Are you hearing me? You were born under the dominion of the devil. You were born under the dominion of the devil. The only way you can change that is to come under the dominion of light. That's the only way. The only way you can change that is for you to give your life and say, Satan, I reject you. I refuse to be your disciple. I refuse to live in your world. I refuse to behave like you. I will not be like the devil. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man comes to the Father except by me. So there is only one way to be born again. There is only one way to be saved. And Jesus is the only way. Do you understand what it means to be delivered from the dominion of darkness. Do you understand what it means? Listen, listen. When the Bible said we have been crucified with Christ, it means that we are dead to the world. Are you hearing me? We die to the world. And so when we die to the world, the world has no power over us. The world has no dominion over us. The world cannot dictate for us. It is important for us to know that we are saved in that salvation we are dead on the other side and that is why when you are truly born again what they do on the other side does not affect you are you hearing me if you read through the book of exodus the bible said when there was darkness in egypt there was light in goshen are you hearing me when there was hail in egypt there was none in goshen when there was death sentence upon their cattle, upon their firstborn, upon everything in Egypt, the Bible said in Goshen, nothing touched their belongings. Are you hearing me? And when Jesus said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world, you need to understand that in this new world, it works differently. It works differently. 
we talk differently. We behave differently. And you need to learn. Listen, being born again is not enough. You need to learn how to operate and walk in the new world. And that's where people run into problems. They are born again, but they are not educated. And so, truly born again, but an illiterate in the new world. Why are they illiterate? Because they have not understood the way to function in the new world. There is a way to function in the new world. There is a way to function. In the old world, listen to me, in the old world, what you see is what you believe. What you feel is what you say. In the new world, we don't live by feeling. We don't speak what we see. Listen, what you see is not a truth. Are you, are you hearing me, somebody? In the old world, in the world you were born into, in the dominion of darkness, you say your eyes cannot deceive you. Is that not what they say? I know what I see. My eyes cannot deceive me. In the new world, your eyes can deceive you. Amen. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 7. We do not walk by what we see or what we feel. We walk by faith. And the world will say to you, I feel it. I know it's coming. I am having this feeling. And somebody say, I am having the feeling that he's going to be sick. He's going, he said, I can feel the symptoms around me. Praise the Lord. And, say, yeah. and then people will come. They will use their hand and do like this. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they do that. Praise the Lord. They say, how are you? They're even slapping you the more. Praise the Lord. And then they say, the temperature is high. Oh, the temperature is, are you a doctor? Praise the Lord. What are you? In the new world, we don't live by our feelings. In the new world, we don't live by the facts. Are you hearing me? There is a difference between the fact and the truth. You need to be taught. You need to be educated how to operate, how to function in the new world. Praise the Lord. Just because you are feeling something does not make it true. The world works by feeling. The whole world works by feeling. That is the dominion of darkness. Everybody works by feeling. They talk their feelings. They talk their fears. They talk their uncertainties. They are insecure. They are worried. And somebody said, you know, who knows tomorrow? Are you serious? You are a Christian. You say, who knows tomorrow? And you say, luckily. No, we don't walk by luck. We don't walk by who knows tomorrow. We know tomorrow. How do we know tomorrow? By faith, we understand that tomorrow is framed and fashioned by the word of God. Your tomorrow is what you say it will be. Praise the Lord. Your tomorrow is empty because you are empty today. Your tomorrow is empty because you are empty today. Because in the new world, Jesus tried to educate us. He said, don't talk carelessly. Don't talk anyhow. In the new world, whatever you talk is what you will have. So don't talk what you don't want to have. Are you hearing me? It's not a joke. In the new world, your tongue is your credit card. If you use it carelessly, you will be in debt. Anybody with a credit card that uses it carelessly, you will be in debt. Amen. He says, be swift. Be swift to hear. But when it comes to speaking, be slow to speak. Praise the Lord. You know why? In the new world, your tongue is powerful. Your tongue is what? Powerful. You will have whatever you say. 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 You say your children have coconut head. They grew up as coconut head. Are you hearing me? You say these children will kill you. One day they killed you. It's not their fault. Are you hearing me? It's not their fault. You say look at them. Useless as their father. And so shall they be unto you. Praise the Lord. 
They come to you, mama, pay our school fees. He said, school fees. After I pay, you people will keep failing, 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 failing. Go and pay it now. You are paying for failure. It's not the children. It's you. You are the prophet and prophetess that is making them to fail. By your word. By your word. By your word. Praise the Lord. Why do you see so much negative things upon your children? No, why? Why are you so negative about your life? It's the sign of darkness having dominion over you. It's a sign of darkness. Why are you so alive to the world and dead to the world? Are you hearing me? Why are you so alive in the world and so dead to the world? For many of you, you know so much about the social media. You know social influencers. You know what is trending. You know all those things. And if I ask you what is trending online in the spirit realm, you ask, hmm? What is the trend in the realm of the spirit? What is God saying right now? What is the move of the spirit right now? You say, move? To where? Does the spirit move? The spirit moves. He moves upon. He moves in those that he dwell upon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the new world, if you read the book of Exodus from chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One language you will find that I am calling them out. I am bringing my people out. Bringing them out. Bringing them out. Out from where? Praise the Lord. I want to say something. When they were to be set free from Egypt, it was only on one condition. One condition. One condition. They were not set free to enjoy themselves. The people of Israel, they were only set free from Egypt on one condition. And that condition was to come and serve God. He said, Pharaoh, let my people go. That they may come and serve me. Praise the Lord. You are not qualified to enjoy freedom until you are ready to serve God. Are you hearing me? You are not qualified to enjoy freedom until you have made up your mind to serve God. You need to understand. Uh, may the Lord help your understanding today. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. I'm reading from the Living Bible. Praise the Lord. And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him also. Trust him also for each day's problem. I'm reading from the Living Bible. We all trusted Christ for salvation. And what the Bible is saying is that if Christ saved you, you can trust Christ for every day problem. Amen. He that saved you from the dominion of darkness, won't he be able to save you from your house rent? No, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't understand what the dominion of darkness means. You don't know what the dominion of darkness means. Dominion of darkness is not like where there is no light. No. No. When there is no light, you can still see. Are you hearing me? When there is no light, you can do what? You can still see. But there is a darkness that surpasses darkness. You know, you know, you, know, you, can, you, can, you, you can touch the darkness. It's like when the Bible talks about, even to today, their mind is still veiled when the word of God is preached to them. Because the enemy has veiled your mind to, not to receive the word of God. Even though it makes sense for you to be born again, you don't know why you are not born again. Even though it makes sense for you to serve God, you do not know why you are not serving God. Praise the Lord. You are a Christian. You know you should be in church on Sunday. They invited you for a party on Saturday. Call it whatever it is. Birthday party. Housewarming party. Whatever party. You went to party. 
and in the party, you couldn't make it to church on Sunday. Are you serious? Are you born again? No, are you born again? Ask yourself, if you reverse the situation, the people that invited you to party, and then you invite them into church on Saturday, and they have something important to do on Sunday morning, will they come? They will not come. No, they will not come. Just turn it around. You were supposed to be in church this morning. And then you went to club. You went to club. You clubbed your way till 3 a.m. And then when you woke up 7 o'clock, you saw a message. Bro, remember today's service. You jumped out of bed. Today's service. And finally, you made it to church about 10.30. And somebody asked you, bro, why did you come late? He said, thank God I even made it. <laughs> no, did you hear yourself? Thank God I even made it. Where did you go last night? You went to a club. You were with your girlfriend. And that is why you didn't make it to church. Should we thank God that you made it late to church? No, we shouldn't thank God. We should wait for you. Are you hearing me? We should wait for you. We should wait for you. You are not born again yet. No, you are not born again yet. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, if you trust, if you trust Jesus for your salvation, you can trust Jesus for everyday problem. Jesus is more than enough for everyday problem. Praise the Lord. Verse 7. He said, let your roots, living Bible again, he said, let your roots grow down into Christ and drop up nourishment from Christ. Are you hearing me? He said, see that you are, <laughs> ah, he said, see that you go on growing in the Lord. It is your responsibility to see that you continue to grow in Christ. Nobody will ever graduate as a Christian. Amen? Our growth is eternal. We don't stop growing at any point. We don't stop growing. It is for that reason, we will only have one Bible. There will not be a second version. Amen? Because this Bible, you may read the Acts of the Apostles complete this year, and then you have grown by next year. Amen? Amen? And as you have grown, let's say, when you go back to the same Acts of the Apostles, you will see what you didn't see before last year. Why? Because your spirit has become enlightened the more. And so, we don't say that we have read through the Bible so we have finished. No! The Bible said, as we continue looking into this perfect law of liberty, well, as we continue looking into it, we are transformed. We are transformed as we continue as we continue. So he says, let your root go deep down in Christ. Go deep down. If your root is on the surface, you won't do anything. You won't be able to stand. Praise the Lord. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. It's only by going deep you can become strong. Amen? Trees that the root goes deep down, they are unshakable. We have had trees in Eden that we thought were strong. But when a strong wind came, they were uprooted completely. Amen? They were completely uprooted. And there are some, their root goes so deep down, no matter what happens, they can swing from left to right, round about and all that, and yet they are untouchable. And that is what the Bible is saying. Let's not just be planted on the surface. Let us be deeply rooted to a point where we take our nourishment from Christ deep down, deep down. And that is why your joy is unstoppable. Because your joy is generated from your root that goes down, deep down in Christ. And there are so many surface Christians. Many surface Christians. Oh, see their lives. See their lives. Praise the Lord. He says, let your lives overflow with joy 
Ah, let your life do what? Overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. Let your lives overflow with joy. It cannot be external. It is something that comes from the spirit. Let your lives overflow with joy. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse 8, he says, Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies. Don't allow faith killers. I have told you about faith killers. Avoid them at all costs. Avoid those that will kill your faith. Avoid those that will neutralize your faith. Avoid those that will question your faith in God. He said, don't let others, verse 8, the living Bible, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers, built on men's thoughts and ideas, instead of on what Christ has said. Let Christ be your life. Not what the society says. Amen? Let Christ be your life. In verse 10, it says, so you have everything when you have Christ. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you have everything, everything when you have Christ. So Christ is an embodiment of all that we will ever need. Christ, I don't know how to explain it to you. I don't know how to explain it to you. Praise the Lord. It's like a man that went to shop in UK during one Christmas. He didn't have some things. And then he went to shop to buy just a few things for Christmas. And while he was shopping, nobody could explain how it happened. When they were announcing that the shop was about to close, the guy didn't hear. On Christmas Eve, praise the Lord. And then they locked him up and closed the shop in a big supermarket. They locked him up. The supermarket was closed on the 24th. 25th was Christmas. 26th was holidays. And then he found himself. He came to just buy a few things for Christmas. Now he has the whole place for Christmas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now he has everything. Everything. And so, if you were the man, where would you start from eating? If you were the man. <laughs> Somebody say, you God. If you were the man, from where would you start eating? You didn't have sugar or milk. You said, before Christmas, we come in. Let me just enter into the shop. Let me just pick sugar and pick milk for Christmas. And while you were in that session, you decided to browse and look around just to, you know, feed your eyes since you cannot buy much in the process. When you came, you, you picked your sugar and milk. You go to the castle, you see everywhere clothes. You said, anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? And he didn't have a phone. And so he quickly went back downstairs, settled down. As he was hungry, he would eat whatever he wants. He was putting them aside in case when the shop will open. Praise the Lord. And so this is what the Bible is talking about. In the world, we only had little things here and there, provisions. When we come to Christ, we have the supermarkets in us. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you understand it? He says when you are in Christ, you have everything. Everything. Better than what the world can offer. And so, eventually when they opened the supermarket on the 27th, ah! here. They called police. Police came. They asked the man. The man said he came to shop. While he was trying to shop, they locked him in. He didn't know what to do. So he stayed. Praise the Lord. He stayed. They asked him, how did you manage? He said he managed very well. He said, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, 
he managed very well. You can see. Praise the Lord. And then the owners of the supermarket, they came to apologize. Somebody shouted, Hallelujah. And they asked him, What do you want to shop? He said, Milk, a few things. He said, It's free, no charge. Isn't that the life of Christ we have? Everything is no charge. Everything is no charge. No Christ and no charge. Are you hearing me? No Christ and what a life. And yet people struggle to live it. People struggle. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. All this anointing for breakthrough, mantle for breakthrough, all this for that, for that, for that. Let me tell you, it is good for babies at a point in life. Are you hearing me? But when you grow into maturity, when you become established in the faith, those things will not work for you. I'm telling you the truth. It will not work. Do you know why it will not work for you? Praise the Lord. You cannot continue to feed the baby with Cerelac. Amen. That baby will never grow up. And so what do you do? After a while, you discontinue the Cerelac. Put the baby on solid food. True or false? Solid. Yesterday, was it yesterday told me that David ate, what was it, peanuts? I said, who finished my peanuts? Mommy said, I and David. I said, which David? <laughs> David is just one year. How can he finish my peanuts? And they said, the boy is eating. Praise the Lord. And they said, the boy is eating. And then I came to me and said, Daddy, Daddy, um, David finished the spaghetti. I said, which David? <laughs> the same David. The same David. He is one year, but he is eating well. Praise the Lord. Why? He wants to grow up strong. He wants to be deeply rooted. And I am telling you, many of you, you are like David. Ten years born again, but one year in lifestyle. That's a problem. You don't want hard meal. You don't want the hard bone. You just want simple message. Nothing that will inconvenience you. Nothing will make you uncomfortable. Nothing will prick your conscience. You just want the place where you say, God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. God will solve your problem. Amen. God will heal you. Amen. God will deliver you. Amen. God will do this. Amen. And you say, Amen, 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 Amen. And you are tired. Aren't you tired? Huh? That's for Nepios. That's for babies. You are 10 years born again. You have come to a point where Jesus said, this son shall follow them that believe. Are you hearing me? The Holy Ghost has stopped breastfeeding you 9 years ago. But you still want to take breast milk. But the Holy Ghost has discontinued. And so you are gasping for air. Uh, uh. Uh, this thing about God, me, I don't know, me, 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 me. And God is looking at you, said, Nepios, babies, how long will I cope with you? And then you look matured, but in the spirit, you are just one year. Why? You have refused, you have become a dwarf, spiritual dwarf. Praise the Lord. In the church, we are careful not to offend you. In the church, we are careful how we talk to you. In the church, we are careful what we say to you. In the church, we are so, we tiptoe around you. Where you walk, they tiptoe around you. Because when you say it even by yourself, when I get angry, nobody will like me. Do you occur to you that the Holy Ghost does not like you? No, does it occur to you that because of that, the Holy Ghost does not like you? You say, when I get angry, you see, you see, <laughs> give me space, so... If I get angry, if I vex, you will not like me. Does it not cut you that the Holy Ghost does not like you? You are a menace to the spiritual life. You are a disappointment to the death of Jesus. Do you get it? Get it? Born but crippled. The new life. The new life brings heroes out of nobody. It brings heroes from non-entities. 
You are nothing, but when the word of God hits you, and you eat it and you feed it, you become a hero. He makes a superman out of you. He says, you are God, but you will die like men, men. You are God, but you will die like men, men. Why? Because you refuse to come into maturity. You are a Christian for 15 years. Malaria still knock you down. You've been born again for 15 years. Malaria, headache. You will cover yourself with blanket and tie yourself. What is it? <laughs> Which kind of talk? You will be asking you to speak in tongues for years. You've not, now malaria is making you to speak in tongues. <laughs> what is it now? <laughs> They talk, you refuse to speak in church. You are speaking it on a sick bed. Bo, bo, bo. Bo. What is it? Ma, 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 look. Look. What is it? See your life. See your life. Speaking tongues. No. I don't need it. I don't believe in it. Okay. Malaria came, you believed. Malaria. Uh. Even this one we say speak, you couldn't now nah, malaria, you couldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Non-stop tongue is what you are doing now. Huh? <laughs> what do you want to eat? <laughs> pepper soup. <laughs> you are not serious. You still mention pepper soup. <laughs> You are not serious. Praise the Lord. You are, you are not serious. So you are not up to the point of forgetting pepper soup. In your condition, you still remember pepper soup. And they brought the pepper soup. You still complain there's not enough meat. Are you sick? No! No! You say, honey now, honey now. This soup is just water, water, water. No meat. How much do you give? No, how much did you give before malaria came? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But I take malaria drug. No, 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 no. The pepper soup is okay. Pepper soup. Just give me pepper soup money at night. Eh? Are you sick? No, are you sick? I don't think so. I don't think so. They should call me to you. Are you hearing me? They should call me. I will pull you out of that bed. I will pull you out of that bed. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. The Bible said, when we are deep rooted in Christ, Christ is a composition of all that we will ever need in life. He, he's got everything. Christ has got everything. Praise the Lord. Remember what we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. In this new life, one's nationality or race, or education, or social position is unimportant. Such things mean nothing. In the new life, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your qualification. In the new life, listen, in the world, in the world, all those things are important. Your race, your nationality, your education, your qualification, your connections. In the world, it matters. In Christ is rubbish. Are you hearing me? You know why? In, in, in Christ, we are connected to the same source. Amen. Now, what determines how much you can exercise is as a level of knowledge. Knowledge. Praise the Lord. You can take Genesis chapter 1 from uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And you say, Lord, I thank you. In the beginning, you created the heaven and the earth. Lord, thank you for creating heaven and earth. Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I am thankful. I am, I am this. I am that. And somebody else, we come to the same scripture. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And somebody will take the same scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are the creator of beginnings. And here my life is. I need a new beginning. Lord, you created the heaven and earth. I desire a new beginning. In my life, in my destiny, in my family, in my marriage, you are the creator of the heaven. The same scriptures. The same scripture. Everyone prays according to their revelation. The same scripture. 
Praise the Lord. And so you say, what are you praying? He said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. He said, but I just prayed that prayer. He said, yeah, everyone according to the illumination of your mind. Amen. And listen, Christian race, this race is based on revelation. Our Christian faith is based on what? Revelation. And this is the only race that has no speed limit. You can read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and then you pray with it five minutes and close it. And somebody takes that scripture. This same Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and somebody prays it for 30 days and he becomes a new person. And you say, how did it happen? He said, the creator of new beginning. For it was written, it is written in the Bible, in the beginning, God created. And therefore, I want a beginning. I want a new beginning. I want God to give me a new beginning. I want him to create a new beginning in my life. I am tired of the old life. I am tired of stagnation. I am tired of struggling. I want a new beginning. I want a change. I call upon the God of creation to make a change in my life. Somebody pray 30 days. 30 days. 30 days. And you are wondering. The new life is powered by revelation. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want us to open to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2. Are we there? He said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the world... I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. When we have been crucified with Christ, it means that we are dead to the world. So why should we live to the world's standard? Why should we live like the world? If you are called out from a place, if you pack out from an old house, is it possible to still live in the same house when you have packed out? But in the old house, in the old house, you may have picked up certain habits because of coexistence. Are you hearing me? You may have picked up being dirty. You may have picked up not tidying up your environment from the old place. And so somebody brought you out of the new place from the old place, and put you in a new place, and said, this is a new place for you. He said, but, but you need to live with the standard of the new place. You said, okay, sir. You are happy. You are excited. And then as you moved, you began to still live the life you used to live in the old place. And the person would come and said, listen, but I told you, you are no longer in that place. You need to live the new life. You need to keep this place clean. This place has a new standard. And you say, I'm working on it. And the person says, okay. Goes away. Come back. And then you are living the same way. You say, why are you living like this? You are no longer in the old place. You are now in the new place. Live the life of the new place. You say, um, give me time. I'm working on it. He said, okay. Okay. He comes the third time. Why are you living like this? You are no longer in the old place. You are no longer in the old place. And what did you say again? I am working on it. One year you are working on it. Two years you are working on it. And the person said, did you read 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man, if any man be in Christ, are you hearing me? Any man he is a new creation. He said, the problem is that you are working on it. You are not supposed to be working on it. You are supposed to hand it over to Jesus. 
your old life, your old nature, it is dead, died with Christ. You don't have it anymore. Praise the Lord. The problem is those that refuse to die to the world and yet want to be alive with Christ. That's the problem. That's the problem. If a student goes to school and every time the teacher wants to say to the teacher, I don't need this, I've already known it. And then the teacher wants to say, he said, teacher, can we go into other things? I know this. Teacher wants I know this. How would that student end up? Hello? How would that student end up? The problem is that many of you don't understand that. In the new life, you must have a teacher to do well in the new life. I'm not just talking about the pastor. You need a teacher, one that will taught you about the ways of the new life. Praise the Lord. If you look at the greatest men that we read from the Bible, the greatest men we read from the Bible, <laughs> Moses, right? Moses, right? Who else? <clears throat> Paul, right? Go and check. Moses was a great teacher, a great scholar. Moses was a great teacher, a great scholar. He was learned. He was learned in the, all the art of Egypt. He was learned. He had a sound mind. You come to the New Testament. We have Paul. Amen. So the greatest men, examples we have in the Bible, that God used to do great and awesome things, they were teachers. Moses one, Paul two. And you know what? They led generations. Not just a church. They led nation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? <clears throat> it takes a teacher to produce Christ-likeness in you. Do you get what I'm talking about? It takes a teacher to drive the word of God into your spirit. It takes a teacher to make you go through the learning process, the discipline. But many don't like teachers. Are you hearing me? Especially in the kingdom of, in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, many don't like teachers. They don't like teachers of the world because they think that teachers are too hard. Amen. But I want you to know that the world is harder. The world is what? Harder. Actually, Teachers makes your life on earth easier. If you will listen. If you will listen. If you will listen. Every teacher's goal is for their students to be better than them. That's the goal of every great teacher. That is the goal of every great teacher. He wants students that will uh, excel above him. A pastor may not do that. An apostle may not do that. Evangelist may not do that. A prophet may not do that. But it is the responsibility of teachers to produce teachers. And any, listen, any movement without teachers will soon die. And that is why we should fear for the body of Christ. We are running short of teachers. It's good to preach. I preach sometimes. But I prefer teaching. Praise the Lord. Teaching is work. Teaching is work. Because for you to teach, you need to learn. Amen. And for you to learn, you need to be disciplined. And you have to accept to be insulted, to be accused. Because when you teach the truth, people think that you are extreme. People think that you are, you, are, you know, why are you so on this? Why, why can't you just be soft like other people? Praise the Lord. Listen, when the devil comes, he doesn't take softness. I told one of my cousins, I said to him many years ago, I said, get to the word of God. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Get to know the word of God. He said to me, it's not his job to read the Bible. He said it's the job of his pastor to read and teach him. He said if he takes cloth to the tailor, will he go and sew it? Is it not the job of the tailor? I said, perfect answer as you win. I said, you win. Praise the Lord. 
It didn't take long. The devil attacked his family. The daughter was sick. And like he said, it's the job of the pastor to read the Bible. And it happened midnight. And he carried the daughter midnight, midnight, rushing to his pastor's house. Yes. He rushed to the pastor's house with the daughter. Knocked. The pastor opened. Yes. What is the problem? My daughter is dying. The pastor started praying. And prayed. And prayed. The daughter died. We never spoke about that matter till today. Because before the Goliath came, I warned him. Get into the word. Get into the word. Do you know that it is a lot more easier for me to keep you healthy than to heal you when you are sick? No. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's a lot more easier for me to keep you healthy always. It is cheaper. It is easier. It is better. Amen. Amen. And so as a teacher, I give you the best prescription. Stay healthy. Stay what? Healthy. And I teach you the way to stay healthy. And I show you the word that will make you healthy. But I can't force you to accept it. And no, when you are now sick, and then you come to me, first, Something is already wrong. Are you hearing me? Secondly, it takes more work to develop faith in you now. Because now you are afflicted. And thirdly now, you are just a problem. Those that won't visit you, you will write their name. Those that won't call you, you write their names. Amen? You keep a record. You say, in this church, there is no love. Oh. You say, that church. you know, you know, when I was sick, nobody visited me because we want you not to be sick in the first place. We don't want you to be sick. Jesus does not want you to be sick. Sickness does not glorify God. And so we do the best. If you will listen, you will never be sick. If you will obey, you will never be sick. And so I try as much as within my power by the grace of God to give you recipe that will keep you healthy. But it is up to you to follow it. If you go to a doctor, he gives you a prescription, you don't take it. Who is responsible? No, who is responsible? I said to you, don't get angry. Don't be bitter. Don't walk in offense. You refuse. You say, Pastor, go and tell those that offend me to stop offending me, then I will not be offended. Does it make sense what you told me? He said, Pastor, if you don't want me to be angry, tell them not to, to stop making me angry. At the end of the day, in your anger, devil will attack you. Not the people that have made you angry. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Resist the devil, he will flee. When they want to make you angry, listen, most of the chronic sicknesses and diseases, it comes from offense, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness. These four things are the things that open the doors for the devil. Four things. If you can do with... Without these four things in your life, you will never be sick. Just walk in love. Walk in love. They call you idiot. Say, God bless you. I'm not an idiot. Praise the Lord. False prophet. False prophet. And they are all around. Even in the church. Paul prayed and said, pray that God will deliver us from unreasonable and wicked men. Was he not in church? Were they not in church? Hello? Were they not in church? Unreasonable. Wicked. Are you hearing me? Oh, reasonable. We can, you know, Pastor Isaac was reading the devotional. He says, after he read it, very beautiful, he said, those of you that have not ordered, order your copy, we don't want to sell it. We want to give it out for free. Praise the Lord. But we need partners to print it. We need partners to join with pastor and to distribute it. Are you hearing me? Do you get what I'm saying? My birthday wish is to distribute 2,000 copies. That's my birthday wish from now to the end of January. For us to do what? Distribute 2,000 copies. Don't give me cake. Don't give me goat. Are you hearing me? I don't need it. Amen. And so you hear it. You hear it. You heard what Pastor Isaac said. Then after service, you say, can you imagine what they are saying? Pastor's birthday, there won't even be rice. 
You know, this church has become very stingy. We used to have rice and stew regularly. See what pastor is saying now. No rice, no meat, no stew. You know, on pastor's birthday, what kind of church is this? You see the way the unreasonable and wicked took it. Are you hearing me? Did he give money for the rice? No. Did he give money for the goat? No. You can also get angry. You can come to mommy and say, mommy, I'm not accepting this. I'm giving you two million. Everything that we need to eat, cook it. Yes. Say hallelujah. Yes. Say hallelujah. Yes. Say hallelujah. Yes. You will eat more than enough. Yes. Praise the Lord. You will eat more than enough. Just after service, go to her. You say, mommy, you know what? Um, I am not doing anything about the devotion. I don't believe that, but I believe in food. You may not say it that way. He said, Mommy, this is what I want. Take two million. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I will not have any problem with that because you're also feeding the brethren. I will not have a problem with it. Seriously. Amen. But I said, this is what I want for my birthday. I want us to distribute 2,000 copies of that book free of charge to people. Amen. I don't need anything. I don't need anything. I don't need cake. Don't need anything. I have enough clothes. Shout hallelujah. But unreasonable and wicked people, what would they do? They would twist it around. Twist it around to their brethren in their midst and they would spread it as a poison. That's what Paul said. Pray. Pray that God will deliver. Who? Him, Paul. Ministers, that God will deliver us from unreasonable and wicked brethren. Let me pray like that. We are not in the world. We are in the world where the word of God works. What you need to do is to live according to the word and you will prosper. Live according to the word, you will never be sick. Live according to the word, you will flourish. So us, so us always have an expectation. And God said, I will give you an expected end. But you see, it takes a sower to have an expectation. Without seed, there will be no harvest. Professor Adeshina, the, the director of African Development Bank, he said something. And he said it in the big conference, live on CNN. He said, what Africa needs to come out of poverty is for Africa to be able to put seed in the ground and produce a harvest. He said, without it, no matter how much aid, no matter how much giving, he said, nothing will bring Africa out of poverty except Africa learns how to do what? Put a seed in the ground and produce a harvest. He said, that's the only way for the Naira to appreciate. Are you hearing me? You don't, you don't have strong currency by confession. We are going to make our currency strong. The currency, Naira will be strong. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Are you hearing me? If you want Naira to be strong, develop strong economy. You young people, stop 419. Produce something. Do something. Praise the Lord. Stop 419. For one night, we never make Naira strong. But when young people get into creativity, it doesn't matter. Look at other nations. They are creating wealth out of waste. All the plastic that's lying about around, you can create things from plastic. You can create things from disused materials, used clothes. You can create handbags from it. You know what? You want already made. You want to rob somebody. You want to cheat somebody. Your mind is said, you want to, what do you call that in Jap? Jap? You want to Japa? Jap? Jap? Japa? You want to Japa? You want to go where somebody else has built? What are you, parasite? No, what are you? I'm just looking for you out of this country. If you get that, you'll be a criminal. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. In this new world, we don't look for another land. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Any believer, wherever you find yourself, there is good in that land. 
All you need to do is to dig it. Are you hearing me? You are looking for where somebody else has dug. You are lazy. So lazy. 10 o'clock in the morning, you are still sleeping. You say, yesterday was tough. I watched this film till 4 o'clock. Are you hearing yourself? Are you hearing yourself? Yesterday was tough. This film they showed. Ah, if you see what happened in that film, one year, year girl just destroyed man's life. Look at what you are preaching. No, look at your gospel. In that film, eh? Ah, no only will they try you. What about gospelology? We know they try. You cannot quote the word of God. No, you are so so worldly. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know some young people? You ask them, what do you want to do? What is your future? What is your plan? They say, my plan, my plan. <laughs> to tell you the truth, <laughs> if I just find my way, <laughs> if I just find my way, I will japa, I will japa. Is that a vision? Is that a vision? A poor man in Nigeria will still be a poor man in America. I'm telling you the truth. A poor man in Nigeria will still be a poor man in Europe. Are you hearing me? It's just in a different country. Poverty is poverty. You want to come out of poverty? It's very easy. It's very easy. Even if you don't have education, go and learn something with your hand. Go and learn how to do something with your hand. Go and learn how to do something. With your hand. You can learn bricklaying. You can learn tiling. You can learn electrical. You can learn repair. You can spend time one year, two years, three years. Sit under somebody. Learn it and learn it well. Graduate, graduate well. When you have done it, come before God. Lord, here is my hand. Bless it. Bless it. You know what? Young people are not serious. They're not, I'm not going to work for anybody. You see me? Ha. Oh. Oh, you see me? I'm going to make it big. How? How? No, how? I'm going to make it big, very big. I'm going to blow. You will blow. You will really blow. Maybe blow into crickly. Praise the Lord. You are always desiring another man's country. Another man's country. Another man's development. Another man's sweat. What somebody else has worked. And when you cannot make it to another man, you start looking at your neighbor. How to attack them, how to kidnap them. How to make them pay ransom. Are you hearing me? I am talking to you. I am talking to the nation. I'm talking to young people. Change your life. Change your life. How can you be 21? You don't know how to do anything. Is that normal? You say your parents didn't have money to send you to school. Quite all right. I agree with you. So, so, go and learn how to sew. Go and learn bricklaying. Go and learn carpentry. Go and learn electrical. Go and learn something. You say you don't have money. You have a phone? Yes. How much is your phone? 90,000. Is that not madness? Is that not madness? No, you don't have... You don't know how to do anything, but you know how to use phone. How can an unemployed person carry phone? Who is to call you? No, who is to call you? Who is to call you? Unemployed, you carry two phones. Is that not madness? And you are wondering why you are poor. What makes you poor is within you. Pray, you can pray. Read, you can read. What do you like to do? To sit before computer. Back, 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 dot com, dot com, dot com, copy, paste, copy, paste, dot com, com copy, paste. Is that a life? Shout hallelujah. Yeah. You may not like me, but I love you. Praise the Lord. In fact, by next year, young people, I will set a standard for you. I will set a standard for you. You are 21. In this church, I catch you, you cannot drive, I will flog you. What can you do? Can you drive? <laughs> Pastor, actually, no. I drive in my dream sometimes. <laughs> is that what I ask you? No. Is that what I ask you? No, Pastor. Pastor, actually, I practiced before, but... You drive in your dream. And so when I want to go somewhere, you carry me in your dream. Praise 
praise the Lord. Say, I will make it. I'll be a success. I refuse to be a failure. Do you know that God didn't save anybody to be a failure? No! No one saved by Christ is meant to be a a failure. It's not possible. In this new life, in this new family, we don't have failures. You need to get it. You need to get it. (laughs) Praise the Lord. The other day I was congratulating one of my daughter. The mother just bought land and put her name as the owner. Praise the Lord. I say, congratulations, coming to pass. You will be landlord without spending one penny. Some of you got angry. Pastor is just saying it because he doesn't know how difficult it is to buy land in Lagos. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know when I stop paying rent in this country? In this country. You are saying, Pastor, don't know. Are you hearing me? Pastor say, you will be a landlord, a landlady, without paying one, one, one naira. You are already angry you. Why would pastor be talking like that? He doesn't know how life is. I don't, do you know what life is? Even your life, do you know what it is? No, do you know what your life is? Are you hearing me? You say pastor don't know about life. Are you, are you serious? Pastor, your pastor does not know about life. You work for 35,000. Now, that's what you work. You work for 35,000 a month. Pastor, you spend 35,000 to buy fuel in one day. And you say, Pastor, does not know life. I pity you. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Instead of you to sit down and learn and be what? Be inspired. You are offended at the teachings of the word of God. You get angry with messages that are supposed to provoke you. Until you hear the word of God that will preach your conscience, you will never change. Listen to me. You need to hear something that will make you angry for you to change. If the word of God has not made you angry, it has not hit you yet. And until the word of God makes you, provoke you, you are boiling with anger. You are boiling with anger. You know, you know. We had a birthday many years ago. We had a birthday for one of the children in the, in the house. And so the birthday was over. A week or two later, we sat together to watch the video of the birthday. And as we were watching the video, it was, you know, it, it was beautiful. And then after we were watching, 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 we noticed that the boy was crying. It's your birthday video we're watching. Why are you crying, Rema? He said, the auntie in that video just carried me to pass him. I didn't give him in that video. And so he saw that meat passed him by on his birthday. And he wept. How can meat pass me by on my birthday without eating it? And he got angry. And he started crying. We have to beg him. He said, no, the auntie didn't give him the meat. But he was overexcited that day. So meat didn't really register. But now he sees on the video that on his birthday, on his birthday, that auntie passed him by with the meat. Yeah, are you hearing me? Until you see the same video that the devil have robbed you, robbed you of your finances, robbed you of your health, robbed you of your family, robbed you of your standard, robbed you of your clothing, robbed you of your everything, and then you wake up and say, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it back. In the name of the Lord, everything that the enemy has stolen, I'm taking it back. I'm ta-. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until you get that, until you come to where you are provoked, you will not recover. Until you are provoked, you will not recover. And all that Jesus is doing is to show you how you have been robbed, how you have been cheated by the devil in the darkness. And Christ wants to bring you into the newness of life. And you are still doing kai for Jesus. As if you are enjoying your life where it is right now. Praise the Lord. You don't come into the new life by accident. The new life begins by you giving your life to Jesus. Jesus.